Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, I have Damian Roman with me, and he is the design principal at Process and Design Studio, and he is working towards becoming a licensed architect in California. His path to licensure is not what you might expect, and so I wanted to bring him on today to show that there are multiple ways to get to the finish line. Damien came from a background in music, but wasn't interested in being a part of the music industry. So he, he decided to start architecture school with the goal of developing a strong knowledge in city planning, vernacular architecture, and tectonics. While in school, he was fascinated with learning about the best architects and their visions, but unfortunately, school became a financial hardship and he was forced to drop out. So he is actually pursuing a license, he is actually pursuing licensure without an accredited degree. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about how that's possible, what the steps are for that, for anyone listening who might be in the same process. Um, but first, before we get into that, I do wanna hear a little bit more about your story from you. So um, whether you wanna talk about like before you even got into architecture or how you decided to make that step into that, you can kind of decide how you wanna go with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to share a little bit about this process. Um, so yeah, so it all started when um, I, I was in the music industry. I was a um, guitarist and then became lead singer. And I kind of did that for a few years, actually, uh, traveling all over in some rural areas of the United States, trying to get some branding. And also I started to travel into Mexico. But um, Traveling with other people is not as fun as it may seem. So after a long hardship process of just kind of like being on the road, it didn't seem quite the fantastic adventure that I wanted to pursue. So I knew that when I had to come back to San Diego, which is where my family is, I needed to settle down and look more for a professional career since that is what all parents want from us as children. So so what I did is go into schools and the majority of schools programs didn't quite attract me as architecture did. So I wanted to pursue that and find out for myself what architecture was all about. I had no idea what architecture was. I had no idea how someone can become an architect. I had no idea that someone had to be licensed to actually um, practice as an architect. So I just jumped right in. I had no hesitation and it was like like you just said it was i was loving it uh, you know the arts the music the everything was combined i couldn't be happier unfortunately um you know school um became uh, over the years every single year became more and more expensive and that's when i started to learn more about you know inflation and economics and so be right before they mentioned to me that school was gonna have to be out of my own pocket and no longer through um, the loans, I started to become a little more worrisome and, little, and more active on my finances. And what I mean is like, I started to learn, oh, this is how much I spend on school. This is how much I spend on rent. This is how much I spend on other basic needs. And with that knowledge, that actually started to give me a little bit more about what, what was I supposed to do next. Um, unfortunately, when I had to drop out of school, it really hurt um, emotionally. It hurt um, my ego. It hurt everything I could have ever considered to be hurt of. And so I started to read a little bit more about uh, self-help books. Um, which I kind of, I found a lot of them to be helpful um, because I know that a lot of people struggle to start testing and finish testing. So it was kind of interesting for me to even learn that because uh, when I was in school, I was like, why would you spend all these years and all these nights studying architecture and not actually become licensed? So it was kind of impressive for me. Um, even when I, I know NCAR gives you like a percentage of how many people are actually passing what tests. And I was stunned to see how many actually the percentage are like anywhere between the fifties and sixties and seventies. And it was impressive. And that's, that's, that's only the people that are actually signing up to test. So that was kind of impressive. Um, 
And I just so want to say was, too, real quick, that even the minorities and women are way even lower too on that oh, that's percentage right. scale too, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 And it's, um, it's, um, I, I kind of, like you just said, I, I, I love it when there's a, there, when there's a mix of people working on a single project. So, um, so what I, so then after that, when I started to do a lot of the self-help programs and the self-help books, um, I started to give myself the opportunity to come back into the industry. Um, I learned, I noticed that a lot of the, the majority of the architecture firms were only hiring if you actually had a degree. So I was a little bit, um, I, I wouldn't say I was too hurt as when I dropped out of school, but it was a little bit, um, it was a little bit of a um, annoying system, um, process for me. So, so let me ask real quick. So when you left school, did you want to stay in the industry right away? So were you looking in the industry for jobs or were you kind of like, forget this, I'm going to put it on the back burner for a little bit and go in a different direction? So that's a good question. Um, it actually took me a year to realize that I wanted to get back into architecture. Mm -hmm. um, right out of school, my my own way of dealing with that emotion was saying architects love I love architect but architecture doesn't love me back that's that's a sentence I kept repeating myself over and over and over for the next year which is so, interesting sorry I don't mean to cut you off but it's just interesting uh, because going into architecture school without really having a deep understanding of what it is like architects do or even what the process is like but then loving it is hard because once you get in there, if you don't love it, it's not fun. And I feel like a lot of people right. quit because they're like, this is ridiculous. This is not worth it at all. <laughs> so so yeah. to, to go in it without that understanding and still love it, but then come out saying, you know, having that feeling, it should have been the opposite because it's like, you know, it's just the financial issues, but to love it and go through all that you know, that means you definitely are passionate about it. So I'm glad you got back into it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so like I was saying, um, I, I started to brush up on my uh, software skills. And I was able to get uh, jobs as a job uh, captain, I think they called it in engineering uh, positions. Um, so I started working with uh, the big architectural projects that are here in San Diego. Um, just on the engineering side. And that actually improved my skills better because I started to learn more about the other systems that go into a built um, a structure. Mm -hmm. So I really, so that it started to push more my niche to, oh, I should probably go back into this and, and start to pursue something and see what's happening. So I started to go to a lot of AA events, networking events, meeting people, meeting just people on the street. And um, the first couple of my projects were actually from people that I met on the street. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, a little bit about that. It was, um, they, they were looking to do an addition remodel. They didn't really <laughs> understood what the process of hiring a designer or an architect. They, they were both already on code, code compliance issues with the city. So they knew they had to hire someone. So that kind of, help me into being hired because they already needed someone so I said yeah I, I know how to draw and you know I this is what I know this is what I don't know but I'm willing to help so they were like okay sure you know I guess this is what it is and we will hire you so I learned a lot on those projects it took me about a year or nine months to get those completed um while working full-time so I kind of appreciated it because it got me into the understanding some basics of residential projects mm -hmm. of what they are and what they mean. <clears throat> However, the, the majority of thing that I struggle the most with is that they were always calling me architect. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes Damien, the architect, here comes Damien, the architect. And, um, I was always struggling with that because, you know, like I never even finished school. So am I lying to these people? Like, what am I doing? Right. So I explained to them multiple times, you know, like legally you can call me an architect, but I can still help you and blah, blah, blah. So I had those conversations with them, but they just didn't care. They, they kept calling me Damien the architect and they were, they kept referring me to their friends as Damien the architect. 
but I always call myself a designer. I can help with your architectural re uh, residential needs. So with that, I was able to get more projects through their friends who they needed like an ADU now or any other of those projects. So it was pretty interesting to see how I went from like a couple of code compliance projects to like brand new construction for ADUs, multifamily, duplexes. Um, and now I'm actually even working with a couple of architects. And the way that kind of worked out is uh, I, I was straight with them. I'm like, hey, listen, I'll be willing to work with you guys, but what I really want to pursue now is my licensure. So what happened was that I was, they were okay with, I mean, they had to be okay, of course, because I'm working beneath them. So um, they started to sign off on my employment verification forms from the California Architecture Boards and from the uh, employment records from NCAR. So in order for me to do that, I actually did a login with NCAR, um, an application, sorry, and then I did an application with California Architecture Board. So I did an application with both. I thought it was like the best money I ever spent. <laughs> and the California Architecture Board started to guide me and you know tell me, okay, this is what you need. So is there any forms or any other um, employment history that you have? They were they they were like, we want it all. We want to help you as much as we can. That's so like, nice oh. that they were so helpful. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're still helpful because I'm still on the path of mm -hmm. becoming licensed. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they told me, like, send us all your transcripts, send us, um, and I even mentioned, like, but I didn't finish school. And they're like, um, it doesn't matter. Like, send us everything you have. Send us your transcripts. Send us all your employment history. Send us um, employment verification forms from today, and we'll be able to help you with everything that we can. So can so, you use some of your your um, years at school towards those years of of history experience? Correct. Correct. So that was that was the part that impressed me the most. Um, the way I understand it, because again, I'm still in the process, is that you need eight years of experience to become licensed in the state of California. So because I had about three years of school, they took those transcripts and I don't know how they calculate it, but they just came back and said like, okay, based on your um, history of education, we're going to, we're going to take all of this. And I believe they said two and a half years or two years. Um, I should have probably looked that up, but I'm, yeah. I'm curious if it, it's, if it's um, required from an accredited school, I would, I would assume like, because, because you went to new school, correct? Correct. Yeah. So since new school is accredited, I wonder if you went to another um, college and had not some accredited. architecture, but that's not accredited. They might not take those hours. That would be something interesting just for people who are listening who may be at a different college. Um, that would be interesting to listen to figure out. That's right. Yeah, uh, that's actually a very good question. I, I, I mean, I, I think I never questioned them because I also attended a community college. So I sent all, mm. I sent all of it. And that's how they came back and said, like, okay, we're gonna take this much from your from your transcripts. We're gonna take we're gonna translate this into time, and then from your employment verification form, this is how many um, hours we need from from these architects to be signing from you. So, for, since that moment on, I I focus um, my career path to be more guided to where I can work more collaboratively with these architects because they're the ones who are signing my hours. So I'm trying to log in as many hours as I can from them. And that also gave me the opportunity to be able to work on mixed use projects or multifamily projects, which is, um, which is something that I, um, I, I started to brush up on a little bit more, um, given that the you know code is a title 24, it's a qu quite extensive. Mm -hmm. so, so then I, uh, six months ago, I actually learned that I do, like I was saying, when I dropped out of school, I love architecture, just architecture doesn't love me back. I, I learned that there's a variety of architects, at least that's what I tell myself now, right? I'm in this process where I tell myself like there's multiple types of architects 
there's a project manager, the project architect, the captain. The... So I learned that um, while I'm in collaboration with these architects, I'm mostly, I'm mostly just trying to, um, sorry, that's my That's dog. okay. <laughs> no worries. Um, so um, I'm, I'm learning to understand with myself that even though my only time for designing is when I'm doing my own projects, which are ADUs, um, I'm still learning the, the foundations of how to put a building together. And that kind of goes along with how I like to think about it with tectonics, because I'm very, I'm very interested in how like systems are put together to uh, build, build a building or build any structure. Um, and especially how that structure itself um, collaborates with the built environment, meaning like the city landscape or Mm -hmm. anything like that so now after all the after a couple of years or so uh two and a half years of uh, um, sending verification forms to um to california architecture board um i was able to finish what is the five year um which is the equivalent of if you finished um, school so that gives me the opportunity to start the ARE testing, mm. which, um, uh, funny enough, the first video that I looked up was the video that you made. Yeah. <laughs> <When> you, <laughs> Wonderful. When you were, yeah, when you were um, getting ready, like when you were talking about your testing. Um, so I started, um, I started to learn a little bit more about how I'm comfortable with testing, how I'm comfortable with all of this. I know that I'm more comfortable with testing when I already know how the test is formatted, what kind of questions are there. So I've, I've been doing a lot of digging into NCARB and how they set up the videos, how they do um, the, how the test, what to expect, the drop, drag and drop, all of those items. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so that's, what, that's why I recommend people to even just schedule their first test because once you go in there and you, even it's even different than like doing an online test because you experience the nerves, you experience the room you're going to be in, you experience like, like to me, and this is the littlest things, but to me, I learned not to wear my glasses because mm. you, I like to wear the um, noise canceling headphones and mm. I would find it distracting that my glasses would be with the head, you know, like little <laughs> random things that actually do like help you along the way. So that's why I always tell people just schedule your first exam it gets those nerves out of the way. Be okay with failing if you're going to fail, but then maybe if you pass, then you're done with one. So yeah, that's why right. it's, it's good to get an understanding of what the test is even about because that's basically a big part of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I totally agree. So as opposed to before when I just jumped right in into architecture, uh, just like you said, right now I'm, I'm starting to uh, study what this, these tests are, are all about so that I'm not like you you've done a great job of telling us don't be afraid of failing don't be afraid of failing don't be afraid of failing that i already have that expectation mm -hmm. so for me it's more like okay like you said i want to start testing so that i can get to my main goal the, mm -hmm. as soon as possible yeah. so now the way i understand what's going to happen is that um now i have now that i have my five years and of um eligibility and now I can start testing. But in the meantime, I still need to start keep recording my hours mm -hmm. so that I can come into a full circle of eight years of experience. So then that hopefully three years from now, um, I'll be able to actually have my California state licensure. So since you have your own business, are you basically working with these architects as an independent contractor just on like project by project basis? Correct. Yeah, and one of one of I, I don't know how it was before, but um, I, I I thought I heard it that it was different from what it is today. Um, but ever since I signed up with California Architecture Boards and um, NCAR, they've they've given me the option to log in these hours as a contractor. Mm -hmm. Which I, I I heard that that wasn't the case before. I don't I mean I, I know very little, but yeah, I I guess in a sense I'm kind of blessed that it's kind of all working out to to where it's just, okay, so you're a contractor, you're working for them for on their contract. Because these guys are, um, these guys, uh, I mean, for my hour, what I expect to be paid, 
as a full-time employee, um, I, I wouldn't want to put that burden on anyone. It, unless you're like a big firm that is actually looking to hire me, then mm -hmm. I'll be okay with that. But um, as an independent contractor, I, I really actually enjoy it a lot because one week I'm working on a high-end residential home and then the next week I'm working on a mixed use project. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, I totally agree. Um, it's funny, I actually just, um, well, by the time this comes out, it won't be today, but in actual today, um, I just came out with the podcast where I'm, I'm interviewing a lawyer and we talk about this because there has been shifts in the law about who can classify as an independent contractor versus who can oh. classify as employee and, and how that affects us because just like you're saying, um, for an uh, an architect or a firm to bring you on as like a full-time employee, that's, you know, a big commitment um, where a lot of firms are small, maybe one or two people, and they like to have, bring on people to help with specific projects and stuff. So it's interesting how that, how that's navigated now, since you have your own company, um, that's like one of the basically rules or whatever, since you have your own company, then that is easier to do, but not everyone has that, you know, sometimes and, people are in school wanting to just draft on the side. So, right. Yeah. It's, it's interesting you say that, um, because I actually did look that up. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so in order for me to be an independent contractor, I had to come in as a, my own company. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that kind of gave me a push to like, keep my company, like keep up with a business license, keep up with, the um, um, NTT mm -hmm. keep up with the paying the name um because that's that's the only way I was like like you said yeah like I I've been reading about that law as well so then maybe <laughs> that's, that's a good thing yeah maybe it's a good thing because it pushes you to keep keep your own yeah like you're saying keep your own business and then you're continuing your portfolio and then once you're licensed you you're still established and you can say you've been established for X amount of years because he's right you know so that's actually awesome so I I can like you even said I can understand that leaving school was probably um, kind of like a shot in the ego or you know shot in the gut so right, right. what what inspired you to keep going like what kind of um, what what inspired you to not give up I guess um, so that's that's actually I, the the only things I can think of was, um, to be honest with you, uh, getting back into the workforce, not having a degree, there's very limited amounts of jobs that you can do. So, you know, I think those jobs are, the whole time I was working those jobs, I was like, oh man, I can train a robot to do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, I mean, it kind of sounds really, really bad, but I, it's just, I, I could tell I wasn't happy with myself and not being happy with myself reflected with those around me. I, I, once you get a little bit of taste of something that you can, you can do, like how you can create, um, you know, like infill housing or social housing, which is something that I'm very interested in. Um, it, it's kind of hard to keep on going. At least it was for me in my mm -hmm. case, it was really hard for me to keep on going knowing that I can brush up on my skill and be able to do that. Um, which I suppose that now that as an, as an independent contractor, I could also go to another architect and tell him like, Hey, I'm, I'm willing to help you out on this project if you want me to. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know how that will be now that I'm working with two colleagues in my yeah. own business. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was kind of hard to just, be on a day to day and keeping up with the bills. I was, I was in a worse situation than when I started school. Mm -hmm. so, so that's, so that's kind of how that was literally the foundation as to why I wanted to go back because I, I actually did believe in it. Well, it's nice that cab um, supports that and isn't just like, because I've always been a believer that college is not for everybody especially if like you're going into college and you have no idea what you're doing. I know, you know, going in for architecture and you're loving it is a little different. So I tell right. people like, don't go to college unless you have a plan or, or you're really into it because otherwise it's a waste of time and money. So it's nice that at least that time you spent there wasn't wasted. It can go right. for there and they still support that. 
and create different pathways because not all of us are, you know, on the same pathway. Some people have been working since they were 16 and, you know, maybe have way more experience than someone who did go to college. So that's, right. I'm glad that you found that that was possible. So once you are licensed, what type of architecture do you want to do? What's like your, what's your dream goal? <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's funny you say that because I'm, I'm actually sh um, shaving the path to where um, a lot of um, nonprofit organizations or um, uh, uh, companies that try to do their best into building um, low income units um, or however they're defined based on the AMI. Um, it's, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself out there so that those people already know that they can mm -hmm. come out to me and, and be able to perform those projects so that I can, I can start again, going back to where I was when I started architecture school, which is in creating this, uh, not, I don't know if social housing is the right word to say, not with everything that's going on with political wise. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's PC no, say, anymore. I don't know what I know. <laughs> to say. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, social housing, what are you, you know? It's yeah. like, it's like a, <clears throat> so anyway, it's like more, more for like uh, the, the, the low income um, um, job market that is mm -hmm. out there. Because yeah. it's a lot. And I yeah, can. San Diego is a good spot for that too. Yeah, and especially for um, the middle class also, mm -hmm. I think, my own opinion. Mm -hmm. um, there's more and more and more you're starting to see how the middle class, um, I don't know how they define it, um, but I know it's based on the AMI, but um, yeah, you can't really see most homes in San Diego for no less than 500,000 mm -hmm. if you want to if you want to live in a nice home in a nice area. Mm -hmm. And even still, even in a nice home in a nice area, it's hard to find it for under 700 these days. It's crazy. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I mean, it depends, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I think that's a good point too, is that, um, you know, I think architects don't want to believe that we only design for people, wealthy people, you know, people who have money, but it a lot of times does end up happening where those are the people that reach out or, or want to invest in their homes right. or because they have that extra cash. So being able to be an architect that can, um, you know, work and, and, and still make an income, but work with people of all different incomes right. is super important, especially because we all need housing, you know, and we all, we all right. want nice housing. So figuring that out. That's yeah, awesome. Totally. Yeah, totally. So, um, because I, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't able to finish school and ask most of the professors, oh, what are some of the things that you would recommend me to read? Um, I actually, <laughs> this is kind of interesting and funny, but um, as along with prepping myself for the ARE testing, I'm also reading as many books as I can on walkable cities or um, soft cities, or uh, I know I'm saying names of books. I don't know if, if you no, um, are okay That's okay. That. No, that's fine. No, I love it. Yeah, I'll have to, what I'll do is I'll have you send me some of them, some of your top recommendations, and I'll link them so people can check them out. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because yeah. totally. I've been wanting to do, I have plans to do a, a podcast episode. I don't know how I'll do it. I maybe have to do it with a video because uh, I wanted to go through my li architecture library too and give some recommendations for some books, mm. but I, I, haven't, I don't have those ones, so I would love to be able to link those for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like... Um, I, I suppose that I, I invest a lot of hours just mm -hmm. reading reviews about people's thoughts and books. Because I also read, um, uh, you know, the, the books about architecture firms, how to set up one, mm -hmm. how to do one. Because um, those are those are very extensive, mm -hmm. mostly because it's non-architecture related. So mm -hmm. I don't know how is it for you, but for me, it's kind of it takes me like three times or four times the reading in order to actually understand what they're saying. Yeah, well, um, uh, those will help you out for the ARES because one of the first exams people take is about practice management and they do right. talk about financials and business entities and all that legal structures. So all of that will help you a lot because that's kind of like a lot of us 
who go through the architecture world and then goes take our first exam, it's like, I don't know how to do a spreadsheet, you know, <laughs> why am I being tested on this? So starting with those books is good. Have you read, um, entre is it, uh, architect plus entrepreneur? It's Eric Reinhold's Oh, book. by 30 by 40. Yeah. Yeah. A workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that yeah. one's a good one. I like that yeah. one. And he came out with that one quite a while ago, but that one's a good one. Okay. So when you're not designing or reading about architecture, what, what do you like to do? Um, I actually am a big fan of horror movies. Are you? Well, it's a perfect but, timing. <laughs> yeah. Um, given the fact that I'm also born on Halloween now. Oh, okay. happy birthday. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, so it's, it's, um, not the American horror movies though. It's, um, um, I actually, I, I've been watching a lot of, uh, m these movies that are coming from South Korea. Oh. Um, they're, they're very, it, I, I, I try to read up on it. I don't know how true it is, given the fact that it's mostly, um, you know, someone who wrote about this is not the actual director writing mm -hmm. about it. But I, they, they are very into um, their 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 customs and their beliefs are are very into um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, superstition. Mm -hmm. So. So their 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 movies reflect that a lot, and that is something that I actually like. I like that uh, anxiety of a stress of what's gonna happen next. Um, I can totally and relate, and my husband thinks I'm <laughs> insane because all I listen to is when I'm not listening to business podcasts or architecture, I'm listening to true crime. And he's like, what, why do you listen to that? I'm like, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's a nice break from architecture and business. <laughs> I, kinda, so I can totally relate. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny. I'm starting to see a pattern now here. Like, I guess we like to kill ourselves in architecture. So we go kill ourselves somewhere else. I know. Well, it's like we're leaving the torture. I don't know what it is. It's I know. kind of ridiculous. That's so funny. Okay. Well, right. so, um, where can people find you? Can we link to any of your accounts or website or anything? Where are you active? Um, I'm mostly active on Instagram. Okay. Um, but I, I will also drop a link to my website uh, <laughs> so that people can find me there. And what's your Instagram handle? Um, it's Right now, it's currently Damien underscore PDS. Okay. But I've been told that I need to separate my social life with my business. So mm. I'll start posting more architecture stuff in there. Okay. <laughs> I'll, start put, I'll start putting like personal stuff in another Instagram. I know. That's what I do. It's a, it's a hard uh, thing to juggle. I've actually moved away from even my personal one. And I've, I've just been doing my business one. But I think because of like the whole political atmosphere right now, I don't really want to see anything but like architecture and beautiful designs on Instagram. Right. I'm just not really interested in anything else. So right. I've been, I've been just doing my business one, but yeah, I've, it's good to have it separate. I mean, it is whatever you want though. I know some people <laughs> do both. So, okay, yeah. perfect. So I'll have, I'll link that in the show notes and awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. I think this is a really important topic. Um, again, just to show that the past not linear, there's multiple ways to go about it. And, right. you know, hopefully if anyone listening is just out of school, like, you know, meaning quit or haven't started school and figuring out if there's a way to go about it, maybe they can reach out to you and, you know, talk with you about your story and figure totally. out how to go about it. And I know it's, I think it's different in every state. I'm sure every state has their own requirements, but in California, yeah. at least they can talk to you and relate and, and just figure out that there's multiple ways to do it. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate for having it. me. This of was course. Awesome. All right. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Uh-huh.